Now from the space age to the past. Australia has long been criticised as lacking in what some like to call culture, a sort of nebulous measure of sophistication. So in recent years we started importing a lot of it. For example, the controversial acquisition of Jackson Pollock's Blue Poles a few years ago. But modernisation has meant that many of our old skills of craftsmanship are being lost. Most of us have travelled on a train at one time or another, but few would realise they were riding on the skills and artistry of men who long ago worked with broadaxe and saw in our southwest forests. One such man is Joe Palandry, a survivor of a time when cutting a single railway sleeper from raw timber was an art form in itself. The steam-driven locomotives of yesteryear depended on a reliable and extensive railway system to transport required cargo from one place to another throughout the state. For more than 80 years, railway gangs have put down countless thousands of sleepers, the foundations upon which rails are laid and trains travel. Each sleeper was laboriously hewn from tall, straight jarrah trees by fit, hard-working men. Joe Palandry and men like him cut sleepers in and around Kawaramup till just after the Second World War. The old railway supply line from Augusta through Kawaramup and on to Bunbury sits on locally hewn sleepers. Sleeper cutting is an art, an art passed down from generation to generation, experienced hand to freshman. Joe Palandry picked up his axe once again to rekindle that art. A tree selected, the hewer decides the safest direction in which the tree should fall and cuts into the trunk on that side. He cuts halfway to it on a downward angle, a practice known as cutting a scarf. Satisfied it's deep enough, he then ring barks the tree. Sand and dust in the bark can damage the blade and teeth of the hewer's saw, which will be used to cut through the rest of the tree. His axe and saw were his most prized possessions, and a blunt saw meant heavy work, slow progress, and less income. With the aid of a hook and spring, Joe cuts through the tree to meet the end of the scarf. It's hard work, and Joe admits it was easier 30 years ago when he was younger and much fitter. The tree begins to crack, its lofty branches lean toward an imminent descent, and the most dangerous part of a cutter's chore comes to a close as the tree crashes to ground. Joe uses his one-man saw to cut through the measured length. That twig pushed through the end of the saw prevents sideward movement and balances it to allow easy sawing. The same principle applies today in the counteraction of forces experienced with bridge construction. Wedges are used to help widen the gap and allow easier cutting. In his day, an average hewer would cut and hew eight sleepers a day. Good hewers would finish 12 a day, while gun cutters, as they were known, could produce up to 20 sleepers in a day's work. The section of trunk cut, the log is completely stripped of its bark. With the use of a hook and crowbar, it is rolled over for barking of the underside. A template is used to outline the sleeper's shape, and with the use of special wedges or billets, the log is split in two. Now comes the cutter's most demanding chore, the scoring, trimming and fine shaving of the actual sleeper. Necessary preliminaries are taken. Small logs known as skids are used to lift the split log from the ground. Underneath, a bed of bark prevents the hewer's timbing axe or broad axe from blunting on the hard and sandy forest floor. 
If the Hewer's cutting axe and saw were treated with respect, his broad axe was treated like a pair of false teeth. It is this implement which squares and finishes off a sleeper, which has to pass the critical eye of a purchasing inspector before payment. Ever safety conscious, the Hewer is careful not to be cut open by its sharp blade. He works with one foot well back and the other wide of the cutting line of the axe. Intense concentration is required to maintain a true line and one moment of distraction could easily ruin two hours of heavy, sweaty and back-breaking work. That's it, he's finished and Joe is quite happy with the end product. One last thing to do before a break is to brand his work. For a load of 16 sleepers, the Hewer received about two pounds and 15 shillings, or three shillings and sixpence a sleeper. The sleeper cutter's campsite was at best simple. He had the bare necessities for survival for days and sometimes weeks in the bush. The trademark of the Australian bush legend, the billy can over an open fire, was a constant companion and the provider of at least a few minutes of tranquility.